Guys, remember, anytime you're going to be putting a new controller or a new motor in your cart, always make sure to lift your cart up and put them on jack stands so that the back tires are not touching the ground. You never know what might happen when you're doing this, and you don't want your cart to take off and run into your garage, run into your door, or run over somebody. So always be safe. Lift the back of your cart. Put them on stands. Let's get going. Club car precedent. Yeah. We're gonna do an AC install. I know, y'all been waiting for me to do one. Don't worry, I only had to get four club car precedents and shoot four different videos to make one video. Overachiever, right? All right, so today, obviously, we're gonna be installing an Avitas five kilowatt AC motor and 600 amp controller. Now, guys, it's pronounced Navitas, not Nevadas or Nevadas. Or Navitas, which I do kind of like the Navitas. It's it's Navitas. So if you're watching this, you're probably sitting next to your cart, getting ready to put yours in. Grab you a beverage. It's gonna be a lengthy video. We're gonna show you the difference between installing a Navitas AC kit on an OBC cart and a non-OBC cart. So stick around, get ready. Let's get wrenching. Navitas. Okay, look at the size of this box. This thing is a beast to move in by yourself. I would definitely recommend using a dolly. I like how it says, caution, it's over 70 pounds. Yeah, that's because it weighs 85 pounds. And it is all there, I promise you. All right, well, let's open this bad boy up and see what we got. Okay, well, if you're wondering why this box weighs 85 pounds, take your handy little razor blade knife what we have inside. We get all our paper. We're gonna come up to our first box. Novitas. This box is what's gonna have your controller and all of your hardware accessories. Ryan's favorite, packing peanuts. So, here we have our 600 amp AC motor controller for the AC kit for our precedent. Anything else in there? Ah, there it is. Our accessory kit for the TAC2 system. I can get it out of this box. Packing peanuts. Okay, so in our Tac2 accessory kit, all of the kits come with this green cable. This is in case you don't buy a cable kit, you can use this for your three phase motor. We always build our own cables, so I'm not going to need that. Your kit will come with an OTF in your white box with a key. going to have your harness for your speed sensor and thermal sensor. You will have a hardware pack labeled 10-00834 and you will have a new mounting plate. Now for this big 75 pound box and yes it is 75 pounds and it's all there. You're going to open up your box, it has your motor in it, has your lifting eyelets, another hardware pack, and your boots. Don't drop your boots. And we got that big old motor in there. Now it's going to get that big thing out. 
All right, the easiest way to get these motors out without hurting yourself, you're gonna have two bars right here. Always grab the bars and lift, and then use the motor to scoot the box out of your way. Okay, easiest way to tell if you have a club car precedent motor. You're gonna have the, the tab, you'll have a three bolt, bolt pattern, and you will have the shaft that pops out of the motor. Remember, when it comes to working on an electric cart, safety first, always remove your positive and negative battery cables first. I like to pull my batteries out every time that I do a setup. It just makes it a whole lot easier to move around without worrying about shorting something out. Guys, I always recommend pulling your batteries out. That way you can check your battery rack and check anything else that you might need to. You're gonna be in the cart. Might as well go ahead and do some preventative maintenance while you're there. Now that we have our batteries out, you can see it is a mess in there. I mean, there is all kinds of garbage. So this is why I like to take my batteries out when I do an install. It's, it's always a good time just to kind of clean up and start over. I mean, ugh, yeah. All right, let's turn this into this. All right, now let's get to work. All right, now that we know where everything's at, we're gonna go ahead and start disassembling. First off, we're gonna remove the 16 pin main harness. We're gonna go ahead and pull this four pin, which we will no longer need. We're gonna get rid of these spades right here. Like I said before, we're gonna leave our run toe switch right where it is. Guys, you gotta remember, we're gonna have to put a ring terminal on this one. So save it for later. Now, guys, if you notice, they have another wire running to this activation switch on the solenoid. I will go ahead and plug it back in for them. Your cart probably won't have it. So just remember, when you go to do your activation wires, it's going to be a light blue, and it's going to be a blue with a white wire. And on an MZJ, it doesn't have spade connectors, so you will need to clip these and put small ring terminals on it. We'll do that here shortly. Now remember, you will have to reuse this red wire. We're not going to need this because we're going to put this one in a ring terminal. We're going to replace our main cable. Now all we got to do is get rid of our big connections. All right, now that we have our 16 pin harness and our four pin connector off the controller, as well as the two spade connectors, we go ahead and we're going to take a half inch wrench. We're going to go ahead and take these big cables off. The yellow one is going to the main or to the other side of your solenoid, excuse me. And then there's a green one that attaches with the yellow one. We're gonna get rid of it as well, because we no longer need it. Then we're gonna disconnect the white and both of our grounds. Now we're going to swap, swap over to a 3-8 socket. We're going to go ahead and remove the controller. Make sure everything's clear and connected. We're good. You'll have one nut up top. And one bolt, I should say. And then two on the bottom. comes that little bitty nasty dirty controller set that aside let's work on the solenoid all right now that we got the controller out of the way we're gonna take the half inch again we're gonna come back up here we're gonna disconnect the yellow wire then we're gonna connect our red wire disconnect our red wire So guys, you won't need this on the AC kit, so we'll get rid of this little bitty, look at that thing, that little bitty sucker. And now we can upgrade from this 
to that. More power. Well, as you can see, we went ahead and took the plate out of our cart. I left the run toe switch right where I said it was going to. The reason I did this was to make it easier to show you guys how to do this. So we already know we got to mount the big MZJ 400 solenoid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an existing bolt hole for this one. But on this side, we don't line up. So there's two or three ways you can go about this. You can always use a Sharpie. Mark your spot. I like to use a self uh, spring loaded punch make my mark and then I'm gonna drill another hole but before we do that I'm gonna make this hole a little bit bigger so that we can put a quarter 20 screw in there and hold this all together that way we get an accurate mark all right guys now that we got our drill bit ready we're gonna go ahead and drill out this hole I'm using a bit just a little bit bigger than a quarter I don't want the hole real big I want to keep it nice and tight but we want to make sure that it's big enough for the screw to go through something to take into consideration you still have your run toe switch in here so I have my plate mounted up on two of my DeWalt screw boxes. That way I'm still, you know, pretty secure and I'm not gonna mess up my run toe switch. So now that we've got our hole drilled out, we can go ahead, we're gonna put our solenoid on. We're gonna put our quarter 20 screw. Now guys, to hold this in place, I'm going to use just a regular quarter 20 nut because I don't want to have to put a nylock on it to hold it down just have to try to take it off all we're wanting to do is get this snug where it kind of stays in place make sure we get it level I'm gonna take my spring loaded punch get it in the center that's money right there now we have a spot marked exactly where we want to drill. Okay, now that we have our MZJ 400 mounted in, we have two quarter 20 stainless steel screws with nine locks on the back. This is going to help us from not that not rattling and coming off. Now that that's on there, we can go ahead. We're going to install our new plate. Guys, it really only bolts up one way. You got a hole here and a hole here. And get that centered up, just like that. Remember to get one started. Don't tighten it all the way down. And get the other one going. Make sure it's nice and snug. Go ahead and tighten your other one down. Okay, we're good and flush. Now we can mount our big 600 amp controller. Okay, so we have our mounting plate on. The tapered screws and the stainless 8 millimeter screws that we're going to use to mount the 600 amp controller all come with hardware pack labeled 10-000834. Guys, remember when you're installing this, you want to install with your 16-pin connector and your OTF and your adapter harness facing up. Now, remember, this is aluminum. You don't have to get nuts. You just have to get these in there. Remember, when you're putting these in, you get the first couple in, don't snug them all the way down. Just get them in there where they're holding. That way you can move around and get all your stuff lined up and don't drop your bolt like I do. Now that you got them all in, kind of go in. Just want to make sure that you get that lock washer flattened out. They don't have to be super, super tight. You don't want to strip that aluminum. While we have it out, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to run a cable from the B positive. We're going to run it to this side of the solenoid. So now that everything is mounted, we're going to take our cable that goes from our solenoid over to our B positive. Remember, this is a 3 8 lug, so this will need to be drilled 
if you get a cable kit from us I pre-drill these for you the other side you want it to match up to the smaller bolt on this one remember this nut is a 5 16th for the terminals on the 3 8 lux all of your bolts on your Navita 600 amp controller are all the 10 millimeter socket that everybody has 30 of that can't ever find one let's get this mounted up now there is a flat washer and a lock washer that go on this terminal I'm not going to put mine on just yet because we still have some other eyelets that we've got to attach when we get this back in the cart but for now so that I can get everything in and mocked up I'll go ahead and put this down All right, so as you can see, we have our two gauge cable going from our B positive to the this side of the solenoid. This side of the solenoid will go to the battery pack. Now we just got to get the motor out of the cart and we'll start assembling everything, put it back together. Okay, so this plate looks a little different than the one that we did earlier. This plate is for a precedent that has a OBC in it. So Something to consider is there's two different plates that come with the OBC. The 08 to 09 models have a plate where you can see the solenoid comes out and comes in. Most of them start at the bottom, come in and turn up. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the biggest thing is, is this one mounts a little bit differently. The other OBCs will mount very similar to this, but this one in particular is a little bit different and I'm fixing to show you why. So, here we have our OBC out of our cart. Now obviously, the main negative cable passes through and we had to cut that out so that we could get the OBC out of the cart. You have a connection here, you have another connection here, you have this big weather pack connection, and when we go, we will make the, all the tie-ins go back to the original negative, that way we don't lose our OBC. I know that sounds confusing, it'll make sense here in a minute. So, whenever we're doing this system, all of this slides in from behind. You can see there's a little bitty screw right here. It takes a 10 millimeter. This all slides in, okay? You can see this hole right here. The only problem with this is with the big Navita system, your plate actually covers that hole. So what you will have to do, or at least what I had to do to make this one fit, is I had to drill this top hole out. I had to drill the backside out bigger so that I can get it to line up. So this will mount just like a stock one. Now, if you ever get, if you ever look at your hardware kit, you'll see all the tapered screws. You know, they come with a quarter 20 thread or a coarse thread. And you'll always find one in there that comes with a fine thread, okay? That fine thread is for this hole right here because you have to sandwich this on top of the OBC in order to get it to fit. I get mine to line up correctly. So you start that one in there. And take your other two screws, and these will be your quarter 20s. Get your plate into the right position. Screw these in. Now everything lines up. So now we can go ahead and mount our new controller plate in this cart with no issues. This customer wanted to keep his stock charger, so we have to keep the OBC in here. Most of the time, if I'm building a cart for me, like a precedent, I'm gonna ditch the OBC because I always run aftermarket charger. So we'll get this one tightened up, and then we'll throw the controller in, and then we'll talk a little bit more about hooking up this OBC. Okay, so you can see that we have our controller mounted. We already have our solenoid running from this side of the solenoid over to be positive. The other side will go to the main battery. But the biggest thing here is this controller plate has an OBC in it. This cart has an OBC. So if you order an OBC kit from us, you're gonna get a two gauge cable that's 28 inches long, okay? One side 
will have a crimped connection. The other side will be blank. This is because you have to be able to pass this two gauge cable through your OVC. Now guys, it's important to note, you cannot drill this out and make this bigger, otherwise you ruin a $200 or higher OVC. The two gauge will fit, I'll show you how to put it in there, but I know everybody's looking at that going, Ryan, there's no, there's no connection on that. Well, when you order a two gauge kit from us, we send you a crimp connection. Now, these are easy to put on. You strip your cable back, put your jam nut through, put your end in there, and then I normally grab it with a pair of channel locks and a wrench, and you just tighten until you crimp it down good. So, and it doesn't matter, you can run this on the B negative side if you want, or you can put this on the negative battery post. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. I normally put mine on the controller side, that way nobody sees it. I also sent a piece of heat shrink to cover this up. So if you have an OVC, make sure you order the right cable kit, otherwise you're gonna be really upset. Okay, so obviously we're gonna to have to put this two gauge cable through this little hole. It does fit. I put some rags behind my plate. I'm gonna go ahead and spray WD-40, get it lubed up, and then I'll we'll spray my cable. Now guys, WD-40 is made for electrical connections, so don't worry about shorting anything out. And it is not super fun to get these started, but it's not horrible. Might have to go through the other side. Oh, yeah, much easier. Now all you're going to have to do, take your razor blade, start right here, roll around, make sure you get all the W40 off, make sure that you're, you cut, you got to cut this a lot longer. With a crimp on with a screw on like that so come back here see how long that is right that's probably about an inch okay you want that coming through then you're gonna put your big connector on screw it together Mount it to your controller. Pull your slack out the other side. Okay, so we have our old negative cable that went through the OVC. Now we have our new negative cable that we pass back through. You're still going to have your weather pack connector. You have another spade connector that's going to connect to the OVC over here on the right. So here's where a lot of guys get confused. So the factory negative cable has this cable, this little 10 gauge cable coming out with a bullet connector and then there is another one going to the OBC so all you're going to want to do is cut both of these small cables off okay now we're going to put an eyelet on this one and tie it back in here and we're going to put an eyelet on this one and stack them on there with our main negative cable and that will give you all your negative cables back to where you need to go. So, like I said, cut your two small ones off, ring terminal, B minus, take your bullet connector one, put a ring terminal, B minus, and then you have your main negative cable, B minus. Then everything else plugs right back into where it goes. Not that hard. Okay, so now everything is on this OVC plate. It's ready to go back in the cart. We have all of our Small cables wired back in with eyelets. Everything's heat shrinked. Main negative cable is on. 
got our main po our positive cable going from our, our, sorry, not positive cable, our cable going from our solenoid over to the B positive on our controller. All that we got to do now is put this back in the cart, plug up the rest of our OBC, run our three motor cables, UV and W, and then we're going to run the positive and splice in a couple wires from the factory harness. Then we can get everything ready to roll. Okay, now with the speed sensor harness unclipped and moved out of the way, you have a 7 16 bolt here, here, and then the third one on the back side. Now, before you go ahead and pull your motor out, go ahead and make sure you have all your cables that were connected to the controller loose and hanging. That way you don't take a chance in ripping something out of the cart. You don't want to get hung up with this motor in your hand. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this last bolt out and then I'm going to grab this motor. I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to set it down with my left hand and set it on the ground. Guys, remember this part's heavy. If you have somebody that can help, awesome. If not, let's make sure to put your man mittens on before you grab a hold of this bad boy. Now on a club car they do have a shaft on the motor that's different than an Easy Go or a Yamaha. So you will have to pull this out and and rattle this down just a little bit to get it off. Alright, now with my elbow braced. You don't got to get crazy. Sometimes these motors are bad about sticking. <laughs> Come on, big girl. <clears throat> we are right there at the end. And that right there, boys and girls, is why I tell you to be careful. I just smashed the snot out of my thumb. Well, that didn't go exactly as planned. <laughs> you would think after hundreds of motor swaps that I would be smart enough not to put my fingers where they don't belong. Guys, if you watch that video, you will see that motor didn't fall all that fast. And that motor is actually not that heavy. It's only about 54, 55 pounds. With that being said, it does weigh enough, especially when you mix it with concrete, to really do some carnage to your thumb. Now, luckily, I didn't blow the end of my thumb out, at least not yet. It's very swollen. Uh, my entire thumbnail is purple. There's a massive blister on the bottom of my thumb. Uh, my thumb is very swollen. I can't bend my thumb at the joint, and this is going to hurt for quite a few weeks. Eh, wrong. It took months for that thing to heal. It just now looks normal. <sighs> In a way, though, I'm not that upset that it happened. Only because it proves my point when I tell you guys to be absolutely careful when you're dealing with these motors. I mean, I've literally put in hundreds of these motors. I've never dropped one before. That's the first one I've ever dropped. That's the first time I've ever smacked my thumb like that with a motor. So, be careful, make sure, if you think you're going to need help, make sure to have somebody there to help you. Now, guys, make sure you do not drop a motor. You will not like it. Alright, let's get back to the install. Ow. Alright, so before we put the motor in couple things I like to do first I take a sharpie and I mark my holes that way when I'm under the cart I can get an easier reference to where I need my holes to be on a club car when you don't take the body off I recommend putting the cables on the motor first these cables are kind of a pain to put in once the motor is in the cart when you put these in just make sure you get your U and V and W all lined up I like to go ahead and mark mine and then I also mark mine on the other end, that way when I'm mounting them to the controller, I don't get lost. 
these take a half inch socket. And when you tighten these up, I like to get my cables as straight as I can. And then you want to give them a really good snug. Now, don't forget, you got to put your boot on. Your solid side goes in first, and then the split side goes in second. That way, as you pull back over your bolt or your nut, everything is covered. Now, we still know which cables we have. When we go to put this in, it'll make the install a lot easier. If you take the body off, you don't have to do it like this. I do it like this because most of the time I don't take the bodies off these carts and this is just a simpler, easier process than trying to get the motor in and then trying to figure out where your cables go. So we have our motor in place and I have it pushed all the way against the flange. Now I went ahead and put my 7 16 bolts back in. Guys, I had to reuse my hardware from the stock motor because my bolts in my Navitas kit for some reason were not long enough. Now, when you put this motor in, don't use your screws to suck your motor in. You want to get your motor up as tight as you can, put your screws in, and then most of the time you can get these almost all the way in by hand. Once you get, you have a bolt here, one on top, and then one on the bottom, and then you have a bigger bolt we'll get to here in just a minute. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten mine down and make sure my wrench is set the right way. So here we have everything already wired in. Guys, all we did was we ran the W to the W on the motor, the V to the V on the motor, and the U to the U on the motor. We have our B positive going to this side of the solenoid. We have this cable going to our B positive on our battery pack. We have our B minus going through our OBC. We have all of our other wires tied into our B negative. So we're now we're just going to hook up all of our small wires. As you can see, we already took the light blue and the dark blue wire and we changed those out to eyelets. Those go on the small terminals on your MZJ400. Now guys, all your wiring harnesses are going to have a red and a pink and green wire that are together. That goes back to your run toe switch. Most of the time, you will have another pink cable with the spade connector, okay? And most of the time, it'll have a white tag on it. This one does not. Now, you can either cut and put an eyelet on this and go back to the stud, or you can do what I do. I build a jumper wire with that on there. That way, it just saves me from having to stretch this wire. And if anybody ever wants to go back to a different solenoid, it's just a wire that you don't have to cut. You can also do this with your blue wires if you want to. I normally just put the eyelets on there. So, on this setup, there's a little bit more involved because you have the OBC. If you don't have an OBC, this step that we're fixing to do doesn't pertain to you. So, if you do have an OBC, you're going to have another small harness. And it's going to have a black hard-coated plastic spade. And it goes right in to that white... Uh, connection that goes into your OBC. The other one is a small gray terminal with a black boot on it. <clears throat> now guys, this is a little bit more difficult because this bigger MZ, MZ, ugh, MZJ uh, covers where this goes, but it's still not incredibly hard to get to. You just kind of got to move your, your fingers in there a little bit to get it in place. Okay, now that we have our OBC small connectors in, you're going to have another big connector that's a big weather pack, okay? That's going to plug in right there. Now all we have left is we're going to have to run our 16-pin connector back over here to our controller, which you might have to move this around a little bit. Remember, I took my plate out, so everything's kind of... Okay, once we have that in there, now we're going to have to run our wire from our thermal sensor and our speed sensor back up through the same hole that our cables came through. Okay, now we have our connector that goes to our thermal sensor and our speed sensor. We're going to come in here and plug it in. And I, I like to run mine under the harness if I can. You don't want too much stuff pushing out against that black panel in the back. 
Okay, so now we're plugged in there. The only thing we have left to plug in is going to be this bullet connector that goes to our negative for the OBC. And then we're going to have to plug in our cables for our run toe switch. Okay, now here comes the fun part is we're going to have to make all of this fit back down and where it was. So once you kind of get everything hooked up, now you can kind of move your cables around and make sure you get a better fitment. Like I said, that's a lot bigger setup than what was in there. Bigger solenoid, bigger controller. This means more fun, right? So we're going to get this moved around, get our cable set, oh, show you how to button everything else up. All right, once you get all your plate pushed back in place, you're gonna wanna reinsert your T40 screw back into the tie down spot to secure everything. And I will say this, if you have the socket version of the T40, it makes getting in there a lot easier. Okay, so now we have our main negative cable passing through our OBC. We have our main positive going back over to our pack. We're going to clean up some of this wiring that was in here. Now, this cable, you no longer need. You can just dis disregard that whole cable. All right, let's move behind the cart and I'll show you how to button up the back. Okay, so this is the back splash guard off the club car precedent. So, if you can, you can see this one's filthy, right? It's covered in water spots. Most of the time, these things are, on the inside are just gross. Uh, I will be cleaning this one out before I put it back on because this is a customer's cart. So, guys, if you watch other videos, you know, other people will measure out and they'll cut a big window right here for the Navitas controller. Uh, I don't do that. For one, I don't want to go drilling a bunch of holes in mine and letting more water back in there where the controller and solenoid are. Uh, that'll cause corrosion and give give you problems on the road. So I'm going to show you what I do to fix that problem. Uh, the main thing I do is you want to make sure that both your clips are good on the bottom. And then I come up and I take a, a speed bit or you can use a quarter inch bit. And then where all four of your tabs are right here, what I do is I come in and I drill a hole. So what I do is I come in and I drill a hole on both sides of the tap. Now when I get it back under the cart, I will run my three cables for my U, V, and W, and then the harness for my speed sensor and thermal sensor back through this hole to connect back into the controller. Once I have the controller plate mounted from the inside, then I'll come back in and I'll hook these from underneath the cart, and then I take zip ties and I crisscross them from here back to the body and I zip tie this back in a place where it's nice and flush. Guys, this is gonna give you a, not only a cleaner look, but this is also gonna protect your controller from any more water or any dust or anything that's gonna fly up in there. A lot of people will remove this. I don't like to, it's back there for a reason. So let's get this in the cart. Okay, don't forget to hook up your thermal sensor and speed sensor. And then I always like to zip tie mine out of where it's not going to be on anything to melt or get caught up when you're driving. So I'll take mine and I normally roll mine up and then I zip tie mine into place. Now that we have everything buttoned up on the back access panel, everything zip tied in place, we have all our cables run, everything zip tied down. The last thing you got to do is put on your access cover, replace your plastic push pins, and then we can jump to the next part. All right, guys, you're gonna open your Navitas app. You're gonna look for your TAC. You're gonna hit that. First thing that's gonna come up is your dashboard. Guys, this is where all your settings and everything is on the bottom. Your diagnostics is on the bottom. From your dashboard is where you get all your warning lights if something's wrong with the cart. You can see we switch from forward, neutral, and reverse down on the bottom. From the dashboard, you can also lock and unlock your cart. So guys, from here, we're gonna to wanna to go over to the settings. 
And as you can see, the first thing in there is gonna be our speed limit. So we're gonna adjust that from 25 miles an hour and we're gonna bump it up to 55. Now you gotta hit accept. <clears throat> then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is change the diameter of your tires to whatever yours is. Mine's 25, we're gonna change it to 25. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look at battery type. This is where if you have a lithium battery, this is where you can go in and change it. We're on lead acid. We're gonna scroll up here and you see all the different lithium battery packs that you can set up on this system. So once you're done, you hit lead acid. You wanna make sure that your nominal voltage is 48 or 72. Check your main solenoid voltage, ours is 48. Right here, guys, we're gonna scroll down through all this. Your OTF is, is up here, your dashboard. We're gonna go down and we're gonna hit save changes. We're gonna let that save. Done. And we're gonna scroll back up, make sure everything's saved. And then we're gonna come over to diagnostics. We're gonna go down to throttle voltage, double click that, and it's gonna open up a throttle calibration. I'm not gonna start mine because mine's already been calibrated. It's gonna tell you to put the cart in neutral or reverse. You're gonna do a throttle calibration and then that's gonna be... So guys, we're gonna go down here and look at software. This is where you can tell what software your cart has. It'll tell you your firmware revision. We're running a club cart. Go up top to where the three lines are. You can go in here and this is where you update your firmware. Guys, it's all gonna be right there. Just pick out what cart you're running, what motor controller. All of that stuff is available up there in the top left. So go back to the dashboard. Guys, here's where your speedometer is, your motor temperature, your battery voltage. Everything is right there, heads up and ready to go. Guys, I hope that covered everything you needed to know about your Club Car Precedent AC install. If not, you can go find my number on the website and call me. I'll walk you through it. Guys, thanks for watching. Hey, also, don't forget to go check out golfcartsmodified.com. Right now, when you buy an AC kit or eco battery or a Buddy Vision setup, we're giving away a cart. It's already got a five kilowatt, 600 amp controller, has an Eco 105. It's on 15 inch flow form wheels with a custom painted green storm body. Make sure to go check it out. Till next time, guys, remember go modify. Oh, <laughs>